This is Alexar countryside. It has gone through a catastrophic era during the imposed war on Syria. Those villages, particularly the ones located on the western bank of the Orontes River, play a significant role in the transfer of arms and militants into the countryside of homes. This is because it is coterminous with Lebanon from two sides, one from northern Bekaa and another from Khalid Valley and Talkalash. The area has acted as a major transit point for an influx of weapons and fighters to Syria in the past two years. Some of the inhabitants of those villages are Lebanese nationals. Their story began a hundred years ago, when a number of families from Bekaa possessed large areas of land in the borderline villages, and the rest of the families worked for them. After the sykes picot Agreement in 1916, the Syrian-Lebanese border was marked. Lebanese citizens working in agriculture settled on Syrian soil, got married, and have lived there ever since. These Lebanese citizens inhabit around 20 villages scattered to the east and west of the Orontes River. All those villages are located in the al district of Homs province. According to statistics from the governorate, their total population is estimated around 30,000 distributed among more than 2,000 families. Most of them are either farmers or cattle growers. Since the outbreak of the Syrian crisis, armed groups have been formed in al countryside simultaneously with the arrival of armed individuals from various Arab countries. Soon after, assault operations and the killings of villagers commenced leading to the displacement of thousands from the villages located to the west of the Orontes River. As a result of such atrocities, all those villages have been transformed into camps and bases for the Al-Nusra Front. Because they're flanked by Josiah area and Bekaa's projects, they're being considered training centers and field hospitals for militants before they are deployed in Syria via illegal passages located along the length of Lebanon's eastern mountains, al area reaching Talkalash. Tens of thousands of children have been caught in the crossfire on both sides of the border. Later, armed groups started attacking villages in al Hormel area inside Lebanon, turning the area into a veritable battlefield. It was time for decisive action to put an end to the violence and prevent a spillover. The decision was a military operation to be carried out by the Syrian army and the popular committees on the west of the Orontes River and al town, while the targets were creating a buffer zone between Lebanese borders and the western countryside of al that connects the area with the international highway between Damascus and Homs and eventually the Syrian coast and cutting off the supply route to armed groups. The initial target was Prophet Mandu's Hill in the west of Alexar town. It overlooks the eastern and western Alexar countryside, including the town and the Syrian-Lebanese borders from Talkalash to Josiah, passing through the Orontes Basin. In a targeted onslaught, they took all armed groups and an Nusra front fighters by surprise. The vanguard of the Syrian army approached the outskirts of Prophet Mandu's Heights via the Damascus Homes Highway. Rows of infantry, preceded by engineering units, started dismantling various bombs at the entrances of villages and towns prior to storming Prophet Mandu's Hill. they applied new military tactics. This time, the Syrian army embarked on a surprise attack using special missions units, dealing with each target separately and eventually managing to take control of this strategic height. We arrive in the town of Kadesh. We can't help but notice traces of fierce fighting across the city. 
this used to be a police station reduced to a heap of rubble by the armed groups. Whoever controls Prophet Mandu's hide has an advantage over the other side and controls the battle because they can dominate the main and peripheral supply routes in the area. The most important is they cut off the route and prevent any contact between the armed groups along Lebanese borders to Khalid Valley. And that's exactly what happened this time. هذه المنطقة التي شهدت اشتباكات عنيفة بين الجيش السوري والمجموعات المسلحة حيث كانت تتواجد في هذه الأماكن كما نتابع هذه التلة الاستراتيجية تلة النبي مندو التي كانت تتحصن فيها المجموعات المسلحة والتي استطاع الجيش السوري أن يعيد السيطرة عليها بالطبع هذه التلة تشرف على بعض الطرقات وصولا إلى الساحل لذلك كان هناك مواجهات عنيفة في هذه المنطقة وأثار الاشتباكات واضحة كما نتابع من خلال هذا الدمار We start moving from one town and village to the others in the area, the strategic village of Abel. Given its proximity to the international highway linking Damascus to homes, it was liberated by the Syrian army in a quick military operation. Despite the powerful fight put up by the Al Nusra Front, marking the beginning of the army's advancement towards the western side of Al Qsir countryside. That's because the village itself is connected to Al Qsair town and from there towards the Lebanese borders, in particular the Orsal area, shifted into an advanced base to provide the armed groups with weapons and fresh fighters. The Syrian army advanced in a coordinated way. Surprise was the most important element in the battle. The army's tactics this time were not classic. The armed groups thought the battle would commence with the arrival of the Syrian armored vehicles. Therefore, they planted mines on all the routes leading to the villages. Engineering units started dismantling the roadside bombs and mines under a fiery cover, paving the way for the special operations units to advance, a tactical move that left the armed groups in utter chaos. Such events continued to unfold as we moved from one village to another. After Abel, we went to Al Redwania. The streets and alleyways recount the reality of the clashes that took place here. The army's fortifications are readily noticeable. Tunnels that connect houses. They use them to move around safely. Behind each house, they dug one or more tunnels. هذا أحد الأنفاق داخل المنازل والذي يمتد إلى خارج الطريق ومن ثم إلى بعض المنازل من الجهة الأخرى التي شاهدناها قبل قليل هذا النفق هنا تحت الشارع ومن ثم يمتد إلى المنطقة من الجهة الثانية حيث يتنقل المسلحون بداخله ولا يمكن معرفة حركة تنقلهم وهذا يدل على الدقة التي كان يعمل بها المسلحون هنا في هذه المنطقة the devastation caused by the combat here speaks of the magnitude and intensity of it. Before they retreated from the city, the armed groups set fire to the people's homes. We leave Al Rithwania and head for Al Borhania. The houses there double the semi military spots. The militants forced the residents to leave the village and confiscated all their belongings. Burnt up buildings lined the streets and government buildings are no exception. These are the municipality and the main school buildings used by the armed groups. It was from the classrooms in this school that the militants would open fire on the civilians passing on the streets below. The streets were deserted. Moving from one place to another would mean bending forward and running in order to avoid sniper fire. نحن الآن في منطقة البرهانية في ريف القصير كما تتابعون هذه بعض الأنفاق التي حفرها المسلحون والتي كانوا 
يتحصنون بداخلها الآن عمليا قام الجيش السوري والدفاع الوطني بتنظيف هذه أنفاق كانت تمتد إلى بعض الطرقات ومن ثم يتحصن فيها المسلحون The outskirts of Alksir town reached their critical moment by cleaning up those villages considered vital for the armed groups to reach homes the scenes of the battle have changed dramatically particularly the battle that reached the gates of Alksir town the town of Al Sakraja has also been the scene of all-out war. The buildings here, especially the main school, were a safe haven for huge numbers of Al Nusra Front fighters. There are farmlands around the entrance of the village. The armed groups did not allow the farmers to reap what they had sowed. Instead, they forced them out of the village and confiscated everything they had. <laughs> تتابعون تم تنظيفها من الجيش السوري والدفاع الوطني والآن أصبحت تحت سيطرة الجيش السوري وهذا المدخل الرئيس لهذه البلدة والتي كانت تعتبر كذلك معقل رئيس للمجموعات المسلحة لأنها أقرب إلى بلدات القصير وقريبة كذلك تعتبر من بلدات غرب العاصي The tunnels are the most outstanding feature of these villages They run several meters under the roads and houses and lead up to the farm هذا كذلك أحد الأنفاق الذي يمتد إلى منطقة أخرى وتحت المنازل كان يستخدمها المسلحون The most strategic area here is the town of Ain el Tanur. It possesses water pumps that provide the homes in Hama governorates with water. All this area was under the armed group's control. They threatened several times to cut off the water supply to the more than 4 million Syrian citizens. Ain al Tanur fell in less than 24 hours. That's what one of the popular committee's volunteers stationed at the Al Radwania and Al Sakraja villages told me. While the combing process by the Syrian army continues, we reach Al Nahria village, the last one near the Irantes River. The village used to accommodate a large number of An Nusra fighters who fired several rockets into Lebanese territories. After cleaning up An Nahria, the armed group's last stronghold in the west of the Orontes River, this side became secured and arrangements have been in progress for a decisive battle to liberate Alexir. هذه هي بساتين النهرية هذه المنطقة كانت تتواجد هنا المجموعات المسلحة الآن أصبحت كليا تحت سيطرة الجيش السوري والدفاع الوطني وتعتبر آخر بلدة من مناطق غرب العاصي الآن كل منطقة نهر كل منطقة غرب نهر العاصي كلها أصبحت تحت سيطرة الجيش السوري وأصبحت مناطق آمنة حيث كانت تتواجد هنا فيها المجموعات المسلحة Abu Huri, a town named frequently in the media and considered by the armed groups as a formidable fortress. From here, they issued several threats. It was the scene of a bloody confrontation with the army. داخل بلدة أبو حوري هذه المنطقة التي كانت تتحصل فيها المجموعات المسلحة هذا هو الساتر الترابي الذي شهد مواجهات عنيفة. حيث كانت قد قالت المجموعات المسلحة أنها تسيطر على هذه المنطقة وهنا كانت تدور الاشتباكات في هذه المنطقة التي كانت تتواجد فيها هذه المجموعات المسلحة الآن أصبحت كليا تحت سيطرة الجيش السوري. The armed groups stopped at nothing in forcing the residents to leave their town. هذا بيت أنا يا خي هي هويتي اسمي علي سليمان حمدان أنا. وأمي اسمها شمسي خضور من أبو حوري من قرية أبو حوري موليد أبو حوري أنا ربيت هون أنا وعائلتي وأهلي وجدي هون هاي بيوتكم هاي بيوتنا هون أخذوها وغصب عنا تحت قوة السلاح لأن بس مأيدين لها الدولة هن كانوا يتواجدوا هن كانوا يتواجدوا ببيوتنا أخذوها مقرات لألين هذا الساتر اللي صارت عليه هذا الساتر اللي صارت عليه مواجهة بيني وبين 
اهالي المنطقه اهالي المنطقه عرفت كيف نحن هجرونا من بيوتنا و... وضحكونا ومن شان بس لاننا نحن مع الدوله The scars of the clashes are obvious here and tunnel digging is still happening The city is not too far that is what a military source told us The clashes have concentrated on the eastern Al Buwaitha city where groups of armed men are stationed. The battles have not been confined to these areas. The Syrian army started its operations to reach other towns and villages to the east of the Orontes River. After its forces managed to tighten the grip on Alexer, boosted confidence and high morale were two decisive factors in the battle. We will continue our coverage and bring you the latest developments as and when they unfold.